Hey! How's it going, everybody? Sorry, a few seconds late. Uh, having a hard time waking up on Friday, man. <laughs> Apparently everybody else does, too. There's only a few people here. Caden was first, and then he got an ad. Hey, man. Ads support the stream, because this is definitely my livelihood. Um, what's the deal with no school on the calendar? I don't know. Oh, oh, that's because, so, um, yeah, so Valen, originally, um, today was supposed to be a compensatory day for parent-teacher conferences, but since parent-teacher conferences was kind of weak and only really covered like two extra hours out of my contract time. I felt like we would should still have class today. It's not like you guys are doing anything anyway. Um, yeah, Hunter, so the May 15th deadline, I'm going to send out a calendar this afternoon. Um, I'm going to send out a calendar this afternoon for um, all of your stuff right so i'm gonna send out what we're doing for the rest of the school year that's gonna go out this afternoon um and so you guys look forward to seeing that that's also the calendar i'm going to use for the introduction slide and the outro slide starting next week um so that way you guys will know what to expect um when it, we talk about the 15th the after the 15th if you are fully caught up on everything and you have all your assignments turned in and you take the trimester final, um, you can be done. Yes. So that is direction that we received. But if you're not caught up on everything, you don't have everything in when the 15th hits, you have until the 22nd, the next week, to get everything turned in and done. So yeah, so May 15th is the, it's like the, the final day that I can give you new stuff. Um, so we're going to have our final opens on May 15th. Um, <laughs> and it goes, it'll be extended kind of throughout the next couple of days. So if you want to be done on the 15th, you can, um, but we are going to have some assignments. Uh, in terms of what I'm going to do, I'm probably going to just do some homework help, maybe some streams, maybe just some fun stuff, um, but we'll kind of have to figure out. I'm still debating on that, which is why I haven't sent out a calendar yet. So yeah, May 15th. Some of you, if you have AP tests, you might even have AP tests that go up through the 22nd. Um, it kind of depends on who you are and what you're doing. But yeah, so the, the idea is that I, I, we've made a decision as a faculty that May 15th uh, is going to be the deadline. Hunter, the, the final is going to cover everything that we've done this trimester, which is not as much as we usually cover uh, second trimester. Um, but yeah, so it'll just cover this unit that we're finishing up right now, and it'll cover the next unit that we're going to be starting on starting next week. And then it'll also cover the chapter 13 and 15 stuff we did um, before we went on uh, the COVID stuff and then uh, the first part of streaming. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So open notes, right? So that says it up on uh, up here, right? So open note, okay. Um, Good morning, good morning. The the test on Canvas, right? You only get one attempt, though. You don't get multiple attempts. You only get one attempt. Um, hey, Valen with a 15-bit cheer again. <laughs> Thanks, man. Um, so, yeah, but it is due. I moved the deadline to Monday, uh, and the test is going to open right after class finishes. Um, yeah, and so Seth, that's kind of my main idea. That's the, one of the reasons why I made it open notes is because I, I want you to know that you can use your notes um, because I, I don't want you to feel like you're cheating if you use your notes. But don't use other people and don't use Google. Um, yeah, Kate, that's a, a real, yeah, basically we were going to do four units, but I'm kind of combining the last two units to give you the important stuff. And so instead of doing four units, we're only going to do three um, because we've we've just had to you know extend things out because of the timeline. But um, I do want you to know that if you are going to take AP, uh, I'm going to make sure that you have the foundation that you need to be successful. 
So those are kind of, that's my guiding principle over these um, next couple weeks is I want to make sure that those of you that are going on to take AP chemistry are prepared enough that you won't be behind when you get there. So um, yeah, that's kind of kind of my ideas, my, my thought process behind everything. Uh, but yeah, so you can use your notes, but of course it should reflect your own work uh, and it should be... Um, just you and what you're trying to do. So um, do it yourself, only one attempt. So make sure that you double check your answers um, so that you don't miss anything for silly mistakes. Okay, cool, that was a lot of questions really fast. Um, anything else? So with the new grading scale, there won't be an extra credit things to, to boost our grade. Yeah, that, that's the case, um, Valen. So I did go ahead and update all of your grades in Skyward, and I took away a lot of the extra credit. Um, so what that means is your, most of your grade percentages will go down, but in terms of your letter grade, uh, a lot of your letter grades are still going to be at either an A or a B. Um, so the, the new current scale is 85% and above is an A. Um, we'll get into the test in a second, Ellie. Um, let's, I kind of want to do some general questions first. It, it's not going to be too long. It's only, um, I think like 20 ish questions. I'll, I'll pull it up and we'll, we'll go through it in a minute. Um, it, it should only take you my, my estimation that if you just like sit down and do it from start to finish, it, it should be less than an hour, somewhere between it, like half hour, to 45 minutes, somewhere in that range, if you just sit down and do it. It, it is less problems than have been on the homework assignments. So there are, there are fewer questions than on the homework assignments. So it should take you less time than a homework assignment would. But I do want you to kind of sit down and do it in one sitting. That's kind of how I'm, I'm designing the test to be. Uh, any other general questions? Uh, the homework, yeah, I did shift the homework to be due tonight, Trinity, which is why I wanted to spend the first couple minutes answering any any last homework questions. I know most of you, well, I hope most of you have got it done. Um, but yeah, so we did break it up into two parts. So make sure you have both parts done, part one and part two. Part one, the first 10 questions, part two, uh, the last 10 questions. So if you have any, if you've been working through it and you have any last questions, I can maybe do a couple here. Um, yeah, Cooper, you're more than welcome to pause on the test. Um, I don't have a time limit set on it or anything. You can start it, come back to it. Um, you can do it here and there. Um, the test will not be timed, Olivia, but you just have to finish it before it closes. Xander, I thought we already did 20. Yeah, we did 20. If you go back to Monday nights or Monday morning stream, uh, we did problem 20 near the end of Monday's stream. So if you want to go back and look at Monday's, uh, which was on um, decomposition reactions, towards the end of that lecture, we did problem 20. So if you want to go check that, you can see that. Yep, no problem. Uh, let's see, answered Cooper's question, answered Olivia's. Um, okay. Cool. Um, any other general questions? Any specific questions on homework? Xander asked about 20, but we already did that one. Any others that you guys want me to go through? Fifteen. All right, we can do fifteen. <laughs> Ellie, for goodness sakes. All right. Um, I like, f yeah, we have enough time. We can do fifteen and seventeen. Sure. So let's do fifteen. All right, so problem number 15 on the homework. Um, oops, let's see if this pen's any good. Uh, was hydrochloric acid, HCl, plus silver nitrate. Okay. Um, does this work? Does what work, Lauren? <laughs> Your ability to type in the chat? Uh, okay, so HCl plus AgNO3, it's going to be a double replacement reaction, uh, right? Because we have a, a compound plus another compound. And so our hydrogen and our silver are going to swap places. Um, I think we did do 17. Yeah, we, we did do 17. No, you're good, Lauren. 
Um, yeah, I, I remember us doing 17. So if you missed 17, uh, Valen, you can go back in and check that. All right, so we're going to swap. So our silver and our hydrogen are going to swap. So that means our products are going to be silver chloride and nitric acid. Right? <laughs> so we want to double check that um, these are the right formulas. Um, silver is a plus one and chloride is a minus one. And so plus one, minus one, that works out. Um, and hydrogen is a plus one and nitrate is a minus one, plus one, minus one, that works out. Oh, that's cool that you're in St. George, Lynn. Um, we'll potentially do six, Michaela. Yeah, so we'll do 15 and then we'll do six. <laughs> we're, we're nearing the ends of staying home. Okay. Um, all right, so we've got, if we look at this, right, everything's plus one and minus one, so it all works out. Um, yeah, Cooper, we will, we will. We're, we're going to do more in depth than that too. So, um, I, I would hold off on it. Stick around. Yeah. Hotspot is pretty annoying. All right. So when we look at these two products, silver chloride and nitric acid, um, in a double replacement reaction, we always want to double check if one of them is going to be a solid. Um, and so with silver, right? Silver is one of our special guys that silver we remember silver was solid it's insoluble or solid with everything except nitrate and so this silver compound is going to be a solid so silver chloride we would predict would be solid nitric acid a strong acid we would predict to be aqueous okay the balancing is straightforward it's already balanced so it's just one 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 for the balancing um, hydrochloric acid being a strong acid does split into H plus and Cl minus. Silver nitrate aqueous ionic splits into silver plus and nitrate ions. Now silver chloride, a couple people were struggling with this. Remember if you have a solid that's produced, solids do not break apart. Solids stay together. Right? And so our silver chloride is going to stay as a solid. The precipitate, when formed, does not split. Nitric acid, because it's a strong acid, splits. Uh, it's still due to Night Hunter. Um, I, I wanted to push it back a day because I know a lot of people still had questions and it was a really long assignment. So I, I just wanted to spend a few minutes going through it, just for those people that are still working through it. All right, nitric acid is going to split because it's a strong acid. H plus nitrate. Okay. Uh, then we look for spectators. Uh, if you'll notice, the hydrogen ions are spectators and the nitrate ions are spectators. But the silver and the chloride turn into this solid, so they're not spectators. So my final equation is chloride ions plus silver ions make silver chloride. So when we go to turn it in, we make sure we pick all these correct formulas. Our coefficients are just one, 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 one. Um, we say, you know, HCl splits, AgNO3 splits, AgCl stays together, HNO3 splits. The spectators are hydrogen and nitrate. Okay, uh, so that's 15. Um, let's do problem six as well. So yeah, this is a good example of a double replacement reaction. We're mixing two compounds together and the positive ions are swapping. So with double replacement, this is kind of an important idea. Double replacement, you always wanna check if any of the products form solids. Um, that's kind of a thing you wanna know for the test, right? On a double replacement reaction, make sure to check if any of the products form solids. The way you check that is with our solubility rules. Okay. Um, let's do the other one someone asked for was problem six. Um, did we do? No, we didn't do problem six. Let's do problem six. So in problem six, uh, we have iron solid reacting with copper sulfate. Now, in this case, this is going to be a single replacement reaction, okay? Because this time we have a single element, like a metal, reacting with a compound. 
right? So what's going to happen here is the iron is going to attempt to replace the copper. Um, no, you're good, Cooper. You can take you know, about five, ten minutes. Um, so the iron and the copper, we got to check if the iron replaces the copper. To check if the iron replaces the copper, um, we have to look at the reactivity series, and we have to see if iron is higher up on the list. Um, I don't have that pulled up, but um, just iron is higher on the list, and so the reaction does happen. Uh, and so you always want to double check uh, for a single replacement reaction if it happens. And the way you know if they happen is if this metal, this iron, has to be more reactive, has to be higher on the list than copper in order for it, the reaction to occur. Um, I have one on the test where I ask, I give you kind of a setup. I say, okay, if you mix iron with copper sulfate, will it react? Uh, and you'd have to check the reactivity series and you just say yes or no. All right, so there is one that asks that. So this example, right, iron does replace the copper. Um, on this worksheet, I mentioned this on Wednesday, but the iron forms a positive 2 when it reacts in a single replacement sense. Um, iron's a little tricky on a couple of these problems, but in this case, it's going to form a plus 2. There was, I think it was problem 19, that iron stays as a positive 3, and that kind of tripped a couple people up. Um, but in a single replacement, iron's going to go from not having a charge to forming a positive 2. And so I'm going to have iron sulfate, aqueous. Iron's a positive 2. Sulfate's a negative 2. So those work out, plus 2, minus 2. And then my other product is going to be just plain old solid copper. So the copper gets kind of kicked out uh, from the copper sulfate and is replaced by the iron. All right. Um, and if you do this reaction, it's pretty cool. You take iron, which is, you know, a dullish gray, um, and you put it into copper sulfate, and the iron actually starts to turn copper colored. Um, and the copper sulfate solution kind of, it, it starts out as blue, and it becomes lighter and lighter blue as the copper turns into a solid, which is, it's, it's a pretty cool reaction. Um, this is one that you guys would have done um, if we had been able to do the lab. Okay, um, so then we check balancing. Uh, this is another simple balancing. It's just one, 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 one. Everything's all balanced. Um, next to each element on the side, they have a list of like charges. So, uh, Olivia, I think that means like it probably shows the common charges. I would imagine like for iron, it probably lists plus two and plus three um, because it can form either. Um, it, it probably just lists like the possible charges or the, the common charges that the elements form um, would be my bet. So like for copper, it probably says um, plus one, plus two. Um, but yeah, just check me if I'm, if I'm right on that. All right, so one, 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 one for balancing. Um, since this is a solid, it stays as a solid, All right? My copper sulfate's gonna split into Cu2 plus aqueous, SO4 minus, or SO4 2 minus, aqueous. Iron sulfate splits into Fe2 plus, aqueous. SO4 2 minus, aqueous. And copper solid. Now if we look, remember this iron solid and this iron 2 plus, they don't cancel, so they're not spectators, right? And then the copper 2 plus and the copper solid, they change, right? The aqueous changes to solid. They can't cancel, they're not spectators. The sulfate, on the other hand, SO4 2 minus aqueous, SO4 2 minus aqueous, those will cancel. So the sulfates are spectator, and then we get Fe solid plus Cu2 plus aqueous makes Fe2 plus aqueous and copper solid. Right? So if we look in the reaction, the iron goes from being solid to being dissolved, and the copper goes from being dissolved to being solid. Um, Jonathan. I can help you real quick on 12. So 12 is a decomposition. Uh, and so since it's not one of the special ones, it just breaks down to the elements. So it should break apart into mag solid magnesium and oxygen gas.
Um, so this is all the homework I'm going to do. If you have more questions on the homework, um, make sure to email me or get in the Discord this afternoon. Um, I'll be there answering questions. So if you still need more help, if this wasn't enough, if you're still stuck on a couple of problems, um, swing by this afternoon, drop into the Discord. I'll be there answering questions. Um, so make sure you can do that. Or just send me an email or Canvas message. I'll be checking all those things. So whatever you need, um, let me know and I'll be able to help you still. So this is all the homework I'm going to do, we're going to go into reviewing for the test now. Okay, so chapter 10, test review. Um, okay, let's see. So right now, if you just look at the points on Canvas, it says it's 32 points. But I'm probably going to end up like multiplying by three when I curve. And so in the grade book, it'll be out of 100 points. Um, so it's actually not as much as in an assignment. Uh, and I don't do categories and things like that. So it, it's not going to be too detrimental to your grade. Um, but you do still want to try to do your best on it so you can get all those points. Uh, in terms of total questions, right? there are 24 questions. So not, not too much time, not too crazy, but 24 questions on the test. Um, there are, let's see, one, two, <laughs> yeah, I know, I'm saying that I'm going to curve it. So this is what I'm going to curve it to. So it'll be approximately times three. Okay, so of those 24 questions, um, six of them have you balancing, right? So there's six problems. Um, one or two of them just ask, they say, um, <laughs> well, it, it, it depends. I, I like making sure that everyone gets a, a good score. I like curving. Um, so we have six questions that will have to do with balancing equations. So the balancing equations are, um, some of them are uh, just like, hey, when you balance this equation, what's the coefficient of this element, right? <laughs> no, I'll, I'll always curve. Um, and then there's a bunch that are like the other, the, a majority of these are going to be like the problems you've seen on your homework, where they say, you know, when this equation is balanced, enter the, what are the coefficients, enter your answer as a single four-digit number. Right, uh, and so it might be one 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 one, or it might be two one one two, or something. Um, and I have double checked those because those are the ones that I commonly screw up when I'm making the grading key. Uh, so those ones should be good. So six balancing equations. <laughs> okay, so six balancing equations. Uh, so of the twenty four questions, there are six balancing equations. There are. Um, Let's see. There are one, two, three, four. Um, five. Yeah. <laughs> so there's five where you have to identify the type of reaction. Right. So and that's where I'll say like um, I'll say something like uh, iron and copper, like solid iron is placed into copper sulfate. OK, so then you would say, oh, well, single element plus compound. That's a single replacement reaction. So these will be multiple choice questions where they'll basically just give you the reaction and they'll say, OK, um, what kind of reaction is it when um, sodium bicarbonate is heated, right? Single compound, sodium bicarbonate, heated, you should say, oh, that's decomposition, right? So make sure you can recognize the five types of reactions uh, and go from there. Now, Hunter, on that lines, there is another question. There's just one that asks about uh, um, 
the we'll call it the reactivity series aka uh, does the single replacement happen So there's just one. Yeah, yeah, so that's all chapter 10 is, Lauren. Chapter 10 is just reactions. Um, it is mostly multiple choice. Um, mostly multiple choice. Now, I did want to point out something so you guys aren't surprised by it. There are... Um, one, two, three, four... Uh, there, there's seven-ish questions. Uh, well, it's it's really like four. Okay, we'll just say four. One, two, three, four. Yeah, there's four on um, some pictures. Basically, I, I've got this cool graphic that shows a bunch of pictures, and it, it shows kind of these reactions with uh, in more of like a, a pictorial form, um, which is pretty cool. Okay, so what I mean by that is I mean that oh, so what if we had something like uh, this plus this makes this, and I said oh, what does this picture represent? Right, and I, I would ask, oh, what kind of reaction does this picture represent? Uh, careful, Trinity, it's not a single replacement, because notice there's only one product here. So it's going to be a synthesis or a direct combination, right? Because we have these two compounds or elements becoming a single compound. Okay? So you can imagine how I would do all these pictures, right? So let's say I do like a, like a polka dot guy plus... Um, uh, blackened one, okay, and then that produces plus the polka dot guy. Okay, what would this one be? Answer Tyler's question. Yeah, so this is a single replacement. Yeah, Cooper, because what happens is the colored in one replaces the one with polka dots on it, and so we get a single replacement reaction. Tyler, to answer your question, we went over problems 15 and 6 from the homework because a couple of people weren't done with the homework yet. It's not due till tonight, uh, and this is kind of a decent review for the test as well. Then we talked, we've been talking about what's going to be on the test. So there's 24 questions on the test. Um, so far, we've gone through about 16 of them. Uh, and then so we have these pictures. So yeah, single replacement, Lauren, good job. A lot of people said single replacement, Cooper, Xander, Ellie, great. Okay, um, the last couple questions are going to be um, things like, um, like the homework, right? So um, there are one... There's, there's one that asks about um, split versus stay together, All right? So make sure you can identify what compounds split and what compounds stay together. We talked about um, things that split are aqueous ionic and aqueous strong acids. So those are the only two things that split. Uh, it's in the bottom of the chat. And then the things that stay together are um, everything else. So anything that's a solid or a gas or a liquid is going to stay together. Uh, if it's aqueous and it's not a strong acid or ionic, it will also stay together. So there's one question that basically asks you to you know check, check, check what splits, what stays together. Um, and then there are one, uh, two that ask about spectator ions. Right, and then there are one, two, three, 
three that have you writing equations. Right. So um, if we look, right, these last little pieces have all been on your homework. Um, and this guy, right, this and these ones as well. And then these have kind of been, these were on the last homework, identifying the type of reaction. Um, this was kind of inherent in a lot of we've doing. And then this is kind of the basic foundation. So all of the homework and stuff we've been doing has led up to the test. The test should feel very similar to the homework that you guys have been working on. Yeah, if you sub, you get more uh, valence electrons, technically. Which ones are you going to fail, Lauren? The ones from the homework? <clears throat> or the writing equations one? Uh, did I not do my math right? Let's see, 10... 16 plus 6, that's 22. Yeah, there are two left. Um, <laughs> so it's, uh, so Olivia, um, for subbing is, is you have to, it, it's money, people pay money. It's like five bucks or something a month to say subscribe to somebody, um, which I, it's totally a joke. You don't have to subscribe. There technically is like, if you have Twitch Prime, you get a free sub a month that you can subscribe to your favorite Twitch streamer. There, there's a lot of people that use Twitch to support their lifestyle, support their living. Um, following doesn't really do much. It's cool. It gives me like, uh, it, it keeps track of it and it kind of allows for more people to see the stream. Um, but it mostly just notifies you when I, when I'm starting streaming. Um, but yeah, no, do not, do not ever feel like you need to subscribe. Um, this is the reason I'm doing this is because Twitch is the best at, uh, with delay and things like that. We tried a couple other things, like YouTube was terrible. And um, I didn't want to do, uh, I didn't want to do Zoom or Google Meet or anything like that. You guys heard about Twitch Prime? You already have, you already have Amazon Prime. Just link your Amazon account to your Twitch account and you can subscribe for free to any one of your free months to support your favorite channel. Um, no one cares about football, Tyler. Sorry. I'm sure some people do, but not, not a ton of people care about football. No, Ellie, I'm not piercing my ears. Uh... <laughs> no, Ellie, I have no desire to pierce my skin. I like it to be a, a nice layer. Okay, um... Anything that you guys want me to do more examples of or more questions about? Um, what, what else do you want me to, to go through? Thanks. Dave is cool OP. Thanks for the follow. Um, so, Ellie, you got to remember, if I say I'm not going to say live, laugh, love, then I technically have already said live, laugh, love. Uh, am I going to push swim on you? Swim's great. Why are we using capitals? Because capitals is cruise control for cool. <laughs> I, I did, Anya. Ellie just missed it. Um, okay, no, seriously though, any questions on anything that you guys aren't sure about? I've, I've done a pretty good job about preparing you and I don't want anything to be like a surprise. Um, so again, a reminder on how the test will run. It's gonna start, it opens at 9.30. So if you wanna just go straight into it after this class, you can do it and be done with it and have a free weekend. Um, if you, you can use your notes, I'm totally fine with using your notes, use a periodic table. Um, don't Google things, right? Don't use the internet. Don't use your friends. Don't, don't cheat. Um, but you only get one attempt, right? As opposed to the homework where you get multiple attempts, you only get one. If I were you, I would have, um, I would have some paper 
and I would write some other stuff. Um, <laughs> so the I think, Tyler, I think there might be one extra balancing that I miscounted, and I think there might be one extra writing equations I miscounted, um, I think is where the other two are. Yeah, I think there. I think there's another balancing one, and another writing equations one. I think I just miscounted as as I was looking through the numbers. Um, I think I just miscounted. I think there's four ish here, and like seven there. Yeah. No, you're good. You're good, Lauren. You're good. No worries. So yeah, so just uh, be careful. Uh, make sure you read the questions carefully. Make sure you answer the question that's being asked. Um, make sure that you, I like I said, make sure you have, I would have some paper out that I could work out the problems and write them out, uh, especially on the balancing ones. Um, make sure you have those done. Uh, stonks. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's due Monday night, Xander. Man, speaking of the stock market, things are crazy right now. Oil was like negative in terms of its futures and stuff. Weird. Gas is down to like less than or two dollars a gallon. It's crazy stuff happening. Um, no, Hunter, you don't have to submit your work. Um, I debated on having a submit your work thing, um, but I, I figured with just you know one quick one. Um, and then I didn't want to have to people to stress out about uploading files and things like that. So on the test, you don't have to submit your work. Um, so Naomi, I think I have it set to be due on Sunday, but it's open through Monday. So if you can't get to it on Sunday, it's still going to be open on Monday. Um, but yeah, no, nah, LER economy will be fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> oh yeah there was some i think lysol came out and was like do not use our product internally um it's really funny save the frick uh i think it, i saw a news article about it this morning so it was probably yesterday uh, and i i'm sure that he didn't say it exactly like that but who knows our, our our president likes to not filter himself on Twitter. <laughs> All right, let's stop talking about our president. Um, so, any other questions? I, I don't want to. I don't want to waste you guys' time. If you don't have any other questions, we can finish now, um, and then, yeah. But if anybody has any other questions, I'm more than happy to go through some more stuff. So remember so just a few key things, right? So on a, on a decomposition, be aware of the special types of decompositions, right? We talked about um, metal hydroxides, metal carbonates, and metal bicarbonates. Um, I will be in the Discord this afternoon. Um, So yeah, so metal hydroxides, metal carbonates, metal bicarbonates, those ones break apart into a special way. So make sure you double check those special decompositions. That actually, Johnny, that brings up question 19, which is a special decomposition. Um, right, so question 19 was um, iron bicarbonate, FeHCO33. So it's gonna break down into iron oxide, Fe203, water and co2 right so metal bicarbonates break down into three things uh, the metal oxide water and co2 yeah the the biggest thing is that fe203 a lot of people didn't get that formula right because uh, they missed that the iron over here is a positive three charge and it's going to stay as a positive three and so our formula is fe203 some people if you try to do it with like feo it, it doesn't balance out and it's impossible yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Fe203 is the big one. A lot of people had questions on 19. I think I answered a Canvas message, multiple Discord requests, an email or two. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Spell combustion correctly. So combustion, right? Combustion is anytime you have a carbon and hydrogen compound 
and you react it with oxygen, it makes CO2 and water. <laughs> yeah, so combustion. Right. So beware of combustion. Combustions are a little tricky to balance because of the oxygen. I do have you writing and balancing a combustion reaction. So make sure that you're, you're good on the combustion. Um, and you write down the whole formula of the CXH. I think it's, it might even be an O compound. CXHYOZ plus O2 making CO2 and water. So these ones are tricky to balance. Save the oxygen for last. Um, go from there. Um, I don't know if I'll bleach it, Ellie. I have to talk to my wife and see what she wants to do. I could maybe do like a temporary color on it. I think that'd be fun. But we'll see. We'll see. We'll see how bored we get in the quarantine times. We can talk about the chemistry in hair dye. The chemistry in hair dye is actually pretty interesting. Um, how it how it works and how the um, you can get the dye to adhere and why you use hydrogen peroxide and um, all those things are pretty interesting. No, you're good, Ellie. I would never do something that I would I would I would never do something that I wouldn't do otherwise. Um, I don't succumb to peer pressure. Sometimes I make it feel like you guys have a decision. Uh, how can you tell between combustion and decomposition? That's a good question. Um, so normally, when you say combustion, you're going to have keywords like uh, burns, right? And usually it's like, it, it, we could say it burns or it reacts with oxygen, right? So it burns or it reacts with oxygen or it... Um, uh, it lights on fire, right? Whatever. When you're talking about decomposition, if we talk about decomposition, we would say something like, um, we could usually say it, it decomposes, right, obviously. Or you could say uh, it's heated, right? There's a difference between heating something and burning something. When you heat something up, it can decompose. And when you burn something, it would... Um, it lights on fire and it reacts with oxygen. So burning requires oxygen. Heating something up and having it decompose um, is uh, a little bit less. Uh, Technofire, we're going over uh, some of the homework that they have. They've, they've got a test coming up. So we're talking about the types of reactions and balancing equations and predicting products and all those kind of things. It's a high school chemistry class. Oh, tech on fire. Um, if something is reverse combustion, do you, yeah, so Cooper, I don't have any reverse combustions on the test. So that that's a, a good kind of random question. But yeah, I don't have any that are reverse combustions. So yeah, um, let's see. I think I answered your question. Whoever asked that? Oh, Icy Snow. Okay, yeah, 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 so decomposition does have heat, right? So when I say something is burnt, you're not putting heat into it, you're getting heat out of it, okay? So combustion is when you burn things. Combustion is when you light something on fire and it produces a whole lot more heat than you put in. In order to get something to decompose, you have to add a bunch of heat. So technically here, I should say plus heat, right? So heating something and burning something are two very different things. Heating something is when you have to put in heat to get it to decompose. Burning, yeah, sometimes you have to put a little spark in there. Or you have to put a fire to it to get it to start to burn. But once it burns, it, it continues to burn. If you're going to decompose this compound, you have to keep it under hot flame. If you don't keep it heated, it's going to stop decomposing. Does that make sense? So, And the other key difference is that combustion is reacting with oxygen. You have to have oxygen. Yeah, 19 is decomposition. This is decomposition. And this is combustion. So this is decomp. This is combustion. So when something burns or reacts with oxygen, that's combustion. If something is heated and it decomposes, that's decomposition. So this could be anything, right? So this could be like sugar, uh, C12, 
H12, H22O11. Could be alcohol. Um, C2H5OH. It could be um, simply methane. CH4, right? Uh, it, it could be anything. Any carbon hydrogen compound is gonna, but anytime you burn it, it's gonna react with oxygen to make CO2 and water. Yeah, Cooper, we're we're done. If you're you're more than welcome to head out if you want to. Um, let's see. Hydrogen products were H2O and CO2 if it was combustion. Oh, oh, Inya, Inya, Inya. Okay, so remember this is a special type of decomposition. Okay, we, we talked about, we had several, let me pull it up. Um, I have it back in my notes here. We have several types of special decompositions. Um, oh no, is that not, oh, that's not in this notebook. That's in my other notebook, dang it, okay. Yeah, they're, they're variables. They're variables, right? So they could be any number, which is why these are all working out. Um, let me answer Enya's question. Remember, we had three special decompositions. Three special decompositions. A metal hydroxide, a metal carbonate, and a metal bicarbonate. So when these guys are heated, right? Not burnt, but heated, they always produce a metal oxide plus, in this case, water, in this case, CO2, and in this case, water and CO2. All right? So we have a single compound being heated, and it always makes the metal oxide. And if it's a hydroxide, it makes water. If it's a carbonate, it makes CO2. If it's a bicarbonate, it makes water and CO2. So back in this guy, this is iron bicarbonate. And so it breaks down to make iron oxide, water, and CO2. Now, don't get thrown off by this water and CO2. Water and CO2 are produced here, but that doesn't mean it's a combustion reaction. A combustion reaction is when you have a carbon hydrogen compound reacting with oxygen to make just CO2 and water. Right? So yeah, we have carbon dioxide and water in both cases, but they're very different. One is a, a metal compound decomposing. One is a carbon hydrogen compound burning, reacting with oxygen. Um, does that make sense, Enya? Did I lose the chat? What happened? Oh, there we go. No, we're just silent. Okay, cool. <laughs> Everybody's uh, just grabbing stuff. No, nope, stop. There we go. Okay. Um, any other last questions? If you have more specific questions like that are just to you and you don't want to ask them here, um, yeah, yeah. So we could use, so these ones don't need electricity, but there are some other types of decompositions that use electricity. So if we have some compound, the AB, uh, sometimes we can add heat or electricity or both. Um, this is, this electricity is usually indicative of uh, something breaking down into its individual elements. So it's a compound just splits into its two elements. That's where we usually need electricity. Um, so you move the subscript to the front. So if you're splitting a compound in like a, a total ionic sense, um, when you split a compound, you always move the subscripts to the front unless it's part of a polyatomic ion. So for example, if we had something like... Uh, magnesium nitrate, something like this, okay? So magnesium nitrate, if we were to split it apart, would split into Mg2 plus and two NO3 minus. Okay. Uh, similarly, we could do something like sodium sulfate. 
sodium sulfate would split into two sodium ions and a sulfate ion. So notice the two from the sodium comes in front, but the four from the sulfate stays part of the sulfate. And then here, the two, because it's saying there are two nitrates, this two comes in front, uh, but the three stays on the nitrate. So the polyatomic ions will stay with their little subscript guys, uh, but if we have more than one of them, or if we have you know more than one of a single element, that number comes in front. Um, let's see. So <laughs> I think a couple of people have been asking, you know, uh, how do we balance this guy? One iron, two irons. So we need a two here to start. Okay. Um, did I show? I don't know if I showed the balancing for this one. Um, so two irons, right? And then let's see. We got to check the waters. Oh, it is. It was on the Discord. Um, the waters. We have three hydrogens times two. That makes six total hydrogens. So we need a three here for six total hydrogens. And then we have three times two, six carbons. So we need a six for the carbons. Uh, then our oxygens hopefully work. Three times three is nine, times two is 18. So three plus three is six, plus 12 is 18. No, it, it's two, one, three, six. Oh, that works. Yeah, two, one, three, six. Uh, on number 10, does a subscript of bromine change? Let me see. Uh, no, no, no. So bromine is a molecule, Br2 aqueous. And so when you go to like a, a total ionic scent, because it's a molecule, it stays Br2 aqueous. My AP class for next year for sure be third period. That's when it always is. Um, they haven't given us the schedule for next year yet. They were going to send that out to us probably next week. Um, but it, it, AP Chem is traditionally third period. I hope that's not a problem. Because I think the biggest thing with that is it does overlap with Dolce. Um, most people, if they have a concern, it's usually Dolce that it overlaps with or some other AP class. So the bromines don't cancel, Lauren. You are correct. On problem number 10, the only spectator is potassium. The only spectator is potassium. Okay, um, we'll go ahead and call it here. If you guys have any other questions or other concerns, I'll be in the Discord this afternoon. Make sure you finish this homework assignment tonight. The test is going to open here in about seven minutes. Um, so if you want to start that today and get it done so you have a free weekend, you're more than welcome to do that as well. Um, I will curve it. You only get one attempt on the test. Open note. Um, do your best. Cool. Um, have a great weekend. We will continue on Monday. Yeah, Monday's new stuff. We're going to start into the next chapter. We're going to do more stuff. I'm going to send out a calendar um, today that shows uh, through the end of the school year what we'll be doing. So look for an email from me. The calendar I have, so when I go to the outro here, the calendar I have has next week on it, uh, but there's nothing after that. And so I'll be sending out a calendar that has all of that stuff um, this afternoon. So look for an email from me. Uh, it'll go to both you and your parents. It'll be a sky alert. Um, so, yeah. Um, otherwise, good luck on the test. Um, if you have questions on the homework still, I'll be answering them this afternoon. Uh, you are welcome, Miss Naya. And uh, best of luck, guys. Uh, thanks for keep being awesome. I know this is kind of a weird state. So, um, yay quarantine. <laughs> Bye, guys. Have a good weekend.